Welcome to Credit Union Chatbox, the official podcast of Chattanooga First Federal Credit Union. My name is Michael Crosa, and I'm here to learn more about personal finance and what makes this credit union special. In each episode, we'll chat with experts, members, and staff about money topics that matter most to you. Now, this is a judgment-free zone, so don't be shy about asking questions. Learning more about money is how we get ahead. All right, now let's dive in. Hello, and thanks again for listening to the Credit Union Chatbot Podcast. My name is Michael Crosa, and I'm here with Terry Stansel, president of Chattanooga First Federal Credit Union, and Carol Carter, one of her wonderful team members. How are you all doing today? Great. Just awesome. fine, Greg. How about you? Doing well. Doing well. Thanks so much for coming back to the podcast. Thank you for having us. Yeah. Um, okay, so today we are talking about a topic that confuses the heck out of me. We are talking about credit scores. It, yeah. it is confusing. It's a lot <laughs> and, of information. Yeah, you know, I think just as a casual layperson, you know, I hear about it. I know that it's it's bad to get it hit or get checks on it or get checked on it. But, you know, I'm lost and I'm looking forward to learning more. So what, what right. can you tell me about credit scores? Well, the, the algorithms that the credit bureaus have is confusing. Okay. And there's three major credit <laughs> yeah. bureaus mm-hmm. that report on you. Yeah. Um, we here at Chattanooga First Federal Credit Union report to Equifax, and that seems to be the largest credit bureau utilized in the southeast, this part okay. of the country. And But there is Experian and there's TransUnion. Gotcha. So these three credit bureaus, they're the keeper of the score. They're the scorekeepers. Yes. yes. Gotcha. Now, yes. on a mortgage loan, we do a TRI report, which is a combination of all three. Okay. But on our consumer loans, car loans, we only use Equifax. And again, Equifax is the only one that we report to each month. Okay. And if so, I can jump in for a second. Yeah. 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 They all three will have information on you because they garner it from everywhere anybody mm-hmm. anybody that you have financing business with wow. you know loans whatever um they're going to get reported so my takeaway here is that there are these three credit bureaus information will get reported sometimes to one sometimes to all information will get pulled from sometimes one sometimes from all Correct. And I may not even know that Which as is, the as person. As an individual, you you can get one free credit report every year. That you, and if you bank, some of your banks will offer, you know, to give you your credit score, yeah. free entry into your credit report. One, one only. But So of the three bureaus, yeah. only one. But not gotcha. one per each. Used one. to be one per each. You used to be going there and get, try it. Really? <laughs> pull it free. It's I'm telling one. you, I'm learning something new every it's, day. Yeah. One. I'm technically, and I know we're off topic now, but yeah. technically... You ought to check your, your credit reports once a at year. least once a year mm-hmm. to make sure nobody has stolen your identity. Well, we can or, say that or here. erroneously mm-hmm. reported something because you have the right to object. You know, you can you can file an objection with each of the credit re- un- yeah. or credit reporting companies. So, OK, so we talked about the three credit bureaus. Mm-hmm. Do they all use the same kind of like numerical range or is it going to be a different? Yes, they use the same numerical range. However, their algorithms are different. Got it. The way they come up with the number mm, yes. is going to be different. And Got it. us having the history and experience with Equifax, I do like to get into their scoring. Mm. So with a score of 850 being the highest, okay, they will always give at least three reasons why your score is not an 850, with the first reason holding the greatest weight. Okay. So the sense. first reason may be length of time accounts have been established. So let's say you're just starting out, you've got your first car loan with Chattanooga First. Got it, um, you've yeah. You've got a credit card somewhere. Um, so it may be that you don't have the history yet. Got it. And But however, having that secured loan holds greater weight in that scoring. So the more unsecured loans, which would be credit cards, finance companies, those are really a a negative. Okay. That that will hurt your scoring. Another could be um, your credit, your balances on your credit cards to the limits are high. So, for instance, you have a $2,000 limit credit card and you owe $1,900 on that credit card. 
that that will affect your scoring. What will positively help your scoring, and, and for young people who are just getting started, this won't help too much because you don't have a lot of history. Mm -hmm. I'll use myself as an example. I opened up my first credit card in 1985 when I was still in college, and I still have that credit card. Wow. So one of the things that helps bump up my score is the fact that I've had a relationship with this particular creditor for 30 years. Mm -hmm. A long time. Yeah. So that bumps it up. Plus, I never come close to using my, my limits. Gotcha. So it's important about length of your relationship with a credit card, because if mm -hmm. you're going in and, and getting every credit card you can and then closing them out but for whatever reason, yeah. that's, that's going to hurt mm -hmm. you. But you, So I they want to see a steady length and the fact, length, a history of time that you've had a relationship mm -hmm. that and that you sense. can manage your credit well. Got it. So, yeah, so you've been able to prove of like, hey, I've got this 30 year credit card. I've been using it well. I'm trustworthy. This company is, you know, also agreed that I'm trustworthy by obviously it's, they've been with me for 30 years. And so that's why that improves your credit scores because right. somebody else would say, oh, yeah, that's that's somebody that we want to loan with. Mm -hmm. It also gives a history of your residency, mm -hmm. where you've lived. Mm. So if we see that someone jumps around quite a bit, state to state, that that's a red flag for us. It also shows all the employers you've where you've worked. Um, and this is also a warning to people, if you're going to co-sign for someone, keep in mind, you if you are the co-signer, co-borrower, if that borrower is not paying on time, that affects your credit score, which can mean a difference in thousands of dollars mm -hmm. on purchasing a home. So I know you want to be a good friend to someone, and yeah. yes, I'll co-sign with you or co-sign with a relative, but it can affect you greatly yeah. in the long run. So if you do co-sign with someone, be prepared to pay it yourself, and also check and make sure that it is being paid on time. Well, that, okay, that's a good segue then. So we talked a little bit about what a credit score is and why, you know, a higher score or whatever, right? Um, so, yeah, so let's talk about then as the credit union, when somebody approaches you for um, a loan, you see they have a high credit score or a low credit score. Why is it that you're giving better rates to one versus the other? Because the ones with a higher score, first of all, they've earned it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> And second of all, they are less of a risk, a default risk to us. Got it. Yeah. They, they've paid their bills on time. They don't skip payments. They've been in a job, which also means they've probably been in a job or have steady income from some source. Right. Mm -hmm. um, that it's it's not fluctuating because of jumping from one job to another or uh -huh. job loss, et cetera. So that that the higher the score, the the more steady or um, Stable, stable, reliable. Stable is a better word. Stable mm -hmm. and reliable, that person is. Got it. And a, and a lower credit score might indicate that you guys are more likely to lose out on the mm -hmm. money or not. They're higher risk or whatever. to us for, for loss. Yeah. But, I, but I do want to say, Chattanooga First Federal Credit Union, we do give people a chance I love that, that if their yeah. score is low and we tell them, okay, you're, yes, you're getting a higher rate here. But a year from now, we will look at this loan, your credit, mm -hmm. and if your score has gone up and you've paid us on time, we will readjust that rate down. That's great. And we're serious about it. Yeah. Because we want to encourage people to to have be better credit scores. That's awesome. Because, yeah, life happens, things happen, mm -hmm. numbers right. don't always re represent people. Mm -hmm. So I love that you guys do that. But we also, when we're looking at the credit reports, we've had, our concern has been that we can see someone with a mid rate, I mean, excuse me, a mid score, but we feel like it's not warranted. Mm -hmm. You know, they've had some bankruptcies, repos, collections, and then we see someone who's got a very low score and they just have one small medical collection that they're not even aware of. Mm. So it's times like that, that we, um, We'll say, you know, wait a minute, this isn't right. So we're going to bump them up. We're, we're going to give them a good rate mm -hmm. because we do not feel like this is justified. And we encourage them to call the credit bureau 
and uh, discuss it with them. And usually they can get that score changed. That's awesome. And, you know, we've been talking about how a credit union is really here to help serve mm-hmm. the community and be a part of the community and benefit in that way. And that sounds like just another avenue by which you help yeah. serve. Yeah. Yeah. Let's say we weren't looking at a specific purchase or, you know, loan or anything like that. If somebody came in and they're like, hey, I've got a low credit score, let's say they're already a member and I want to work on making this better. Mm -hmm. What are some of the things that you can do to help them out? Well, one of the tools is we can um, have them save maybe a thousand dollars and then we'll take that thousand dollars. We'll open up a CD for them and then we have them borrow against that CD. That is a collateralized loan. And it's reported as a collateralized loan to the credit bureau, which holds greater weight. Mm -hmm. And we ask them to keep it at least 12 months. And that's how you gradually work them up to having a good score Mm -hmm. and cleaning up their credit. What else do you think people should know about credit scores? It's not just the credit union that you can save thousands of dollars. Mm -hmm. If you have a good credit score, you can save thousands of dollars on homeowner's insurance, car insurance, Mm renter's insurance, it's, mm-hmm. it's amazing because they're all looking at your reliability mm-hmm. as well. So they're looking yeah. at your credit mm-hmm. score. So if you've got a high or a high credit score or a good credit score, you're looking at getting better deals on insurance as well as better interest rates on loans, etc. And on renting. Rent, mm-hmm. There's some, some landlords that will not rent homes unless your credit score is 750 or higher. Wow. So that puts a lot of people out Mm -hmm. of just even renting. So are those things that happen automatically or is it, you know, if I'm going in to buy insurance, should I bring it up and try to, you know, if I have a good credit score or? You might, you want to ask about it because it may very well be that whoever did the analysis on who's giving your offer for your insurance, maybe didn't weight that part of it as high, but you might want to raise it. If you know what your credit score is, Mm -hmm. you may want to raise that issue with them and say, can I get a better rate because I have this, I have 750 Mm -hmm. credit score, I have 800. Yeah. Um, There's not many people who are, I mean, there are people, don't get me wrong, who are in the 800 range, but I'd say most people are probably, what, 750? 680. 680 to 750, yeah. Gotcha. I mean, it can be done. Sure. I've Mm -hmm. done it. (laughs) (laughs) Well, uh, it's, it's really cool to hear that you know, not only are these things that, you know, you guys are aware of and work with, but that people can come to you and, you know, work on these long-term plans and, you know, still meet their needs of either buying a home or car or whatever it is. So, right. yeah. So if somebody does want to get started with that process and get their credit score up, um, how do we get in touch with Chattanooga First Federal Credit Union? 423-267-7621 or stop by and see us at 3120 Broad Street. Right on. Cool. Well, I will make sure to put that phone number as well as your website down in the show notes. People can click on it if they want to. Um, Terry, Carol, thank you so much for coming to the podcast. Thank you. Thank you, We've Michael. It. I hope you have. Thank you. I have indeed. I've learned a lot. Thank you. We are a wealth of information, but sometimes not always helpful. <laughs> That's all for this episode of Credit Union Chat Box. To learn more, contact the fine folks at Chattanooga First Federal Credit Union at chatfirst.org, linked in the show notes below. That's chat with two T's, chatfirst.org. This show is produced by Chattanooga Podcast Studios and is a member of the Podnooga Network. If you have any questions or topics for us to cover on the show, please send us an email at podnuga at gmail.com. Now, keep in mind, this show is for informational purposes only and should not be considered financial advice. Laws and policies change often, so always check with an expert before making decisions based on what you hear in our show. We'll be back soon with more personal finance insights on the next episode of Credit Union Chatbox. 